Hallelujah. 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 The man of God said, make some noise for Jesus. Are you excited about being in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. How many came with an expectation this morning? How many is looking for something for God this morning? Well, can we set the atmosphere in this place? I said, can we set the atmosphere? See, we can make this atmosphere conducive to miracle signs and wonders. Are you willing to participate? Come on here. Pray with me, church. Merciful and gracious God, we come before your presence, God. We come with thanksgiving. We come with praise. And most of all, God, we come with honor this morning, God. Knowing, God, this may have been a trying week, God, but you're still God and you're still sits on the throne, God. And we're so thankful, God, that it's bringing about a growth in our lives, God. Now, God, as we enter into your house, God, we pray right now that you would move like never before in this place and in our hearts, God. We ask that you would anoint freedom afresh and anew, God, as they open their mouths to sing the songs of Zion, God. Fall afresh in this place, God. We say, have your way, God. Move any way you would like, God, in this place. Help us not to leave this place the same, but transform us in your presence, God. And as your man of God, release your word in this place and into our hearts, God. Let us go out and tell a lost and a dying world of your love, God. And God, that change is on the way. We thank you now for everything that you're going to do in our midst, God. We welcome you into this place. Have your way. And it's in the master's name of Jesus we pray and all the church said.
trust in man, they're going to fail you. The people you pass by on the street that you smile at, they're going to fail you because we don't think alike. We're nice and we're cordial, but we truly believe in different things. You say, well, we got to help the world. No, we got to help the church. I ain't talking about the world. I'm talking about the church. How many know this battle belongs to the Lord? Amen. You think it's all about Democrats and Republicans? No, it ain't. It's about a devil 
It's about a devil. Politics has changed. We got people that want to kill babies 30 days after they've been born. That's the devil. Yes, it is. That's the devil. So how do we fight back? We're going to lift up the name above all names. And even though half the church in America has lost their mind, look at your neighbor and say, you're in a smart church this morning. You're in a church with common sense. You're in a church that's led by the Bible. You don't have a perfect pastor, but you do have a pastor that's got some common sense.
This is how I fight my battle. Hey! This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. Surround, but I'm surrounded by you. Sing it loud, CFC, come on. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh, we go. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Cause this is how I fight my battles. 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 This is how I fight my
Oh, look at your neighbor and say, he's good. Can we sing one more? Have you got one more in your crowd? Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope with no place to be. Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested in my life, he did. was redeemed, only beauty remains. By your thin heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was a risk, Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. Release from my change. I'm a prisoner. No. was a ransom to be faithfully born. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested in my life, he did. Rejoice as though heaven had lost. I mean, no, we're on the winning side. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hell. Who in hell was arrested in my life again? One more time. Redeemed. 
Yes, we were free, free, forever, amen. When death was arrested in my life began. Oh, we were free, free, forever, we were free. Come join the song of the Lord of Yes, we were free, free, forever, amen. When death was arrested. woman of God. They only come to make us strong. See, because I don't depend on my own strength. I depend on his strength. 
because every time I tried to do it in my strength to go, I messed it up. I failed. I faltered. But when I learned to start trusting Jesus to God Almighty, he said, not by works of righteousness that we've done, but by his shed blood, could God Almighty. That's enough for me, Chris. Huh. I tried, and I tried to work my way into heaven, and I found out no good works could get me there. It was only his precious blood that was shed on Calvary's cross that made the difference. Huh. So now when he look at us, he see his son, could call him out. I'm talking right. The blood covers everything that you've experienced and everything that you've been through. Huh. See, you've been to some places that somebody else is going through right now. And if he hadn't allowed you to go through it because he knew from the very beginning and from the foundation of the earth that he was going to bring you out only building your testimony. Uh, there are the swaths and dying people going to come into this place. And if we don't allow him to change us, good God of mine. Uh, see, change has to begin with us. And when we allow him to do the work that he wants to do in our lives, oh, the world will be so much better. Come on, talk to me, y'all. Huh? See, the word of the Lord has declared that we are light shining in this world. Stop hiding the light of Christ in your life. Let it shine. That will lead those that are still in darkness to his glorious light. Am I right about it? Huh? So lift up your hands, O ye gates. Lift up your hands, your everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord is strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. He never lost the battle. He never lost the case. Huh. See, your situation is perfect for him to step right into. My God. You mustn't hear me. I said, your situation is perfect for him to step right into. My God. Huh. It's time out for us to be children. It's time for us to grow up and be men and women of God that he's called us to be in the time that we're living in. Pastor said it right. It's time for us to stop depending on our government. You're depending on the president, the senators. Come on here. The government, the lawyers, come on here. But I will trust in the living God. <laughs> come on here. We have to trust in the living God. Come on here. He's a weight maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. Come on here. We keep saying it, but do we really believe it? See, your action shows differently. But when we really learn to trust him and cling to him, my God, We're going to blow it sometime. But instead of running and hiding, won't you run to him? How about trying running to him this time? When it gets hard, how about running to him? We run to everything else but Jesus. I remember so vaguely how all the time I missed him and blow it. I ran to what suited me. I found out, Chris, it was an hell. It didn't change my situation. But when I started running to Jesus, I learned he was a way maker. He's a way maker. See, because somebody's in a hard place right now. And I just want you to know, he said he's a way maker. 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 And I'm going to keep saying it to they get in your spirit. He's a way maker. He's a way maker. But I can't see a way. He's a way maker. Come on here. Isn't it amazing? 
that the Hebrew boys got thrown in the fire. They got thrown in the fire. And they was believers. See, we think because we're believers, we're supposed to escape what comes our way. But they said, we're not careful to answer you in this matter. Be it known unto you. If he don't show up, we know he's able to God Almighty. We know with confidence that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think. See, somebody's watching your life. They're watching your life. And if we learn to stand in Jesus, oh my God, oh my God, you're talking about change. Huh? They could experience the redemption that we live in. Huh? I didn't say what well, I said that we live in. We got to live this. We can't just talk about it. We got to live it. Am I right about it? Come on and lift your voice up in a praise to the Most High God. Hallelujah! Come on. Come on, ushers. Come on, ushers. From this day forward, don't you ever think that your situation is bigger than our God. Uh. <laughs> See, Israel saw a nine foot giant <laughs> that they could defeat. Isn't it amazing that David saw something totally different? He saw a giant that he could not miss with the power of the Lord on his side. And that very power that David stood in, that's what we are standing in. No giant in this world or in the world below can stop you from being all that God has called you to be. It's only you. You're your biggest giant. Can I tell you that? You are your biggest problem. You are your biggest obstacle. Because if you can get past yourself and just trust God, uh, He'll turn your whole situation around. Uh, we keep saying we're waiting on God, but God keeps saying I'm waiting on you. He's given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. He said no good thing would I withheld from you. Church, it's time. It's time for the believers to take a stand in this world uh, like never before. Countries and nations being enveloped in darkness. But if we will arise and shine as the light of Christ, that's how the love of God and a praying about a change in this world. Come on here. Will you be the change today? We bless the Lord. Of course, you know that's the only way that you can give it. You cannot attend. You can give on our website. You can download the scriptures. App in the Android. Also, you can give on our website at cfc7talk.com. On our shelf, make the app out there. of our nation, God. 
Matter of fact, you see the condition of this whole world, God. But God, we come to sow today, God, in faith that as we plant this seed, God, nations and kingdoms all around the world, God, in every country, in every nation, that they will hear your voice and that they will come to know you and experience you in a true and a living way, no matter where they are, God. God, we don't care if they're Muslim, Buddhist, or whatever they are. We know you're able to reach them, God. And we pray as we sow that because we decided to plant this seed, that you will bring about change, God. We're not begging, but we're just asking. Because you are our Father. And we know your desire is to fulfill every promise in your word. And we stand on it today. Release it now into the atmosphere over every country and over every nation that they will be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For this is our prayer. And it's in the master's name of Jesus. We pray and all the church say, you may give at this time.
Hallelujah. Can we just bless the name of the Lord? Ah, uh, come on. Come on, y'all. We can do better than that. I said, can we bless the name of the Lord? Hallelujah. He is Lord. Come on here. They do better than that when the queen shows up. My God. We have to understand who we serve. The creator of all things. I said the creator of all things that spoke and everything that exists came into being. That's who we serve. That's who's our father. Good God Almighty. Are you ready for the word? Because I'm, I'm charged up. Hey, come on and receive our man to God, Pastor Daniel Park. Come on and receive this great man of God. Oh, let's give Jesus some praise. I feel some freedom in this room. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I checked online a while ago. We've got several out sick today, but are watching online, and we're lifting them up, especially those taking care of sick babies this morning and little children with the sinus stuff going on. I got a little something going on, too, but um, it's just where the weather changes. I used to think I was getting the flu every year, and then I finally figured out I have allergies. Amen? But uh, anyway, I was about to lose my voice a while ago, but thank God I got Daniel Pearson backing me up. Amen? We're doing the <laughs> We're doing the old George Jones routine on that. Old George was singing on up into his latter years. He had a guy on the band that could sing just like him. And so when jo George wanted to back out, amen, the younger guy came up and started singing a little bit. Amen. That's what us old folks have to do when we get on up there. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, I'm just kidding. Amen. I'm just kidding. Hallelujah. I saw a man yesterday. I could have swore he was barely 50. The man said he was 75. Wow. I said, hallelujah. There is hope for me. <laughs> hope for me. Amen. I saw him at Planet Fitness. So I read, we were at the right place. Amen. All right. I got so much to do right now. Uh, bear with me a moment. Um, this is the Samaritan's Purse shoebox blessing. And this is just a sample of what uh, it's marked right here. It says it's for a boy, five to nine years old. And if you look in here, here is a swag pair of polo socks. Come on, somebody. A nice card. Construction men. Crayons. Dinosaurs. They, they say you can uh, put pretty much any toy in here except nothing that represents war. Because a lot of these children have seen enough war. And we're, uh, we're blessed to live where we're, we live. We don't have sh soldiers and tanks going up down our, uh, our streets, but they do in some of these countries. And so uh, next, next Sunday is the deadline. So uh, are there, and these boxes are empty at the Connect Corner, so you just simply go to the Connect Corner, get one. We've been doing this for years, and we do it through Samaritan's Purse, same people we did hurricane relief through. Amen. How many know when the church sows, if we expect you to tithe and give, then we need to tithe and give together? How do we do that? We do it through missions. And our missions program in this church has never been stronger, and it's only going to get stronger because the stronger we get, the stronger our missions has to get. Amen? Has to. Praise God. We are not going to pull back on missions just so that we can have this fancy thing and that fancy. Well, if, if God wants us to have the, this uh, contrapment, I just got told of a price of something we need a while ago. Man, things are too expensive. Hallelujah. Praise God. Every time Braden says something, it's just dollar signs are just falling out. I'm just kidding. Yeah. But, hey, it takes it. It takes it these days. Amen. Churches have become television productions. But how many know we're looking mighty good out there in online land? We're reaching people for the gospel. We want to thank everybody that's tuning in online today. They could have uh, watched any church, and they decided to watch yours. So uh, get these turned in by next Sunday, and we're going to ship them off and bless some kids. Just think, our kids are spoiled. If our kids woke up and all they had was a shoebox, amen? Amen. 
Reminds me of my elders before me that said when they, they'd wake up, they had a pack of crayons, a brand new pair of socks, and some oranges and apples. Amen. Hallelujah. My granny told me that quick when I started walking in the door with the Transformers and the G.I. Joes and the He-Mans. She said, oh, we didn't have all that when we were growing up. These kids don't either. Amen. In the year 2022, they don't either. But because of you, they're going to get something. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Now, let's go. All visitors, any visitors, turning your slips to the Connect Corner after service. We have some books out there on sale as well. I want to thank everybody who celebrated uh, our 15th anniversary and homecoming last Sunday. It was incredibly awesome and uniquely special. Thank you. I got his fingerprint and I got his coat on this morning. Hallelujah. Uh, ladies' Fellowship Luncheon is today right after service. Amen. So ladies, stay. Y'all going to have a great, great meeting. All right. Our annual early midweek service due to Thanksgiving is Tuesday, November 22nd. Is that next week? Is that next week? Week after next? Okay. All right. So uh, we do that every year for Thanksgiving. It gives you more time uh, to prepare for your Thanksgiving. And then Men's and Ladies Fellowship Christmas Party is Friday, December 2nd at 7 p.m. at something different in Wilson. Register with Gladys Hall. Uh, $25 per person, $50 a couple if you'd like to sponsor an individual or couple. Just make Sister Gladys aware of who it is for. It is a wonderful night, very fun night, and we've got all kinds of stuff. I don't know if she's got games. We've talked about a stand-up comedian. I don't know what we all got going on. But there's, uh, I've heard mentions of different things, and maybe I ought to talk to Gladys first before I start dropping bombs like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, get myself in trouble. Amen, but it's going to be a fantastic night, all right? Uh, big Christmas celebration. It is already time to start talking about Christmas. Christmas celebration is Sunday, December 18th at 10 a.m., and on that day we're going to have a missions bake sale. All right, and the bake sale will be going on in the cafe in the fellowship hall. We want you to donate bake sale items for this event to help support our missions efforts. Thank you. So you just simply bake something, you bring it that day, we're going to sell it, and all the money will go to missions. And that's when we'll have the kids. The kids, we enjoyed that drama last week. They're going to do, do one on this day for us. And we're going to have a children's choir that day, Christmas praise and worship. And I'll be bringing the word that day. It's going to be awesome. Okay, then the following weekend is Christmas weekend, okay? And I had uh, debated on whether or not to do a Christmas Day service, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a Christmas weekend candlelight communion ceremony. And that is going to be, oh, excuse me, I've got the wrong date on here. Okay, I don't have anything up there. Um, <laughs> what am I doing? It's going to be the Friday before that, whatever that date is. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Sun, uh, I think it's the 23rd. I put Sunday, December 23rd. I meant Friday, December 23rd at 7 p.m. Friday, December 23rd at 7 p.m. Nursery care only for this special service. We want you to come in. It's going to be about an hour. Come on in with the kids. Come on in. This is going to be your Christmas weekend. I want us to gather and then everybody is free because we just have too many staff members that are going to be traveling and all of that. It's going to be a very different Christmas for us this year. And I want to be able to, and listen, it don't make me no less holy. I'm still a Christian. I'm still saved. We're going to get together that Friday and we're going to meet and we're going to have a good time. Then y'all can go to grandma's. Y'all can head up the, you know, all of that. Uh, but we're going to do some special stuff this year. So just kind of bear with me. We're going to um, do some special things in my family this year. And so we're going to uh, celebrate Christmas Eve and Christmas Day at home. Amen? Is that fair? I hope it is. All right. Let's have a brief leaders and volunteer rally. Real quick. Um, life groups. We're going to resume our life groups in January 2023. And as of now, mainly the life groups we have are considered in other places to be service groups. Somebody say service groups. Because they're comprised of those who serve together. They will be as follows. We're going to have our entire youth ministry team, including nursery, meet in the fellowship hall with Joy Meadows on the first Sunday after service. 
uh, beginning in January. This will give the entire youth staff a chance to meet every month, fellowship, have fun. You're going to eat in there. Uh, it's going to be a great time, and we want you to stay for that, all right? Then if you work in ushering, security, cafe, hospitality, or greeters, you will meet, your life group will be here at 4 o'clock on the first Sunday, and it'll be headed up by Reverend Eddie Thomas. And we'll ask those that are a part of that can bring different things they want, and they will come together, and they will fellowship here as well. If you are in freedom worship and the sound room, you're going to meet at my house. I'm going to have this crazy group of folks in my house. Y'all pray for me. And the sound room, amen? And we're going to meet uh, from 6 to 8 on the first Sunday. And then if you're a discipleship student, if you're new to CFC, or if you've been here a while and you're not currently serving, you may say, where do I go? You can go to the Redemption Place with Reverend Chris Hall from 5 to 7 p.m. They've had a good life group. They've really never stopped having one. And so you can go over there with them. Now, if you would like to inquire about hosting a home life group of your own, please see Melinda Gonzalez, where she at, if she'll raise her hand, and she will get you a meeting with me and Pastor Tim, and we will sit down and discuss the possibility of you having your own life group. This is a great way to fellowship. This is a great way to meet people. And it's also, I think it's going to make our serving teams stronger in serving. Amen? Amen. Because when you serve together and you're serving together with people you know and you love and you're spending time with, it just makes the church stronger. Also, in the begin, uh, beginning in January 2023, CFC may, we may, we may begin to have a food truck out in the parking lot on some Wednesday evenings. It could begin once a month or multiple times a month with different food trucks. I got about seven or eight different ones I can call on. I'm going to call and see what it all consists of. What I want to know from you, just in passing, if you want to shoot me a text, if you want to shoot me a message, would it help you? Would it help you to be able to come to church, get supper out in the parking lot, bring it to the cafe? Now, you know the cafe's already got snacks and coffee and drinks, but would it help you and your family if you could uh, go out there, buy you a meal, uh, what is this, a hot dog and drinks, pizza, whatever, whoever we get. Would that be, so, there's some churches that are doing that. They said it's, it's turned out to be a hit. Um, I just need to know if it works for us. It may not work for us, okay? Um, but if it would make things easier for you on Wednesday, let me know, okay? And, of course, we already have the Holy Grounds Cafe for coffee, drinks, snacks, but the food trucks could offer a meal that you could take in the cafe and eat with your family and friends before our midweek Bible study, would this help you and your family be able to attend easier? Because we're asking you for one hour uh, a week, and I believe that one hour uh, is just so beneficial. I know, I didn't even preach this past Wednesday, but the legendary Jerry Brazil did, and man, I needed that. I can't imagine going all week and not being able to get a weekly fill-up. Uh, bringing the kids, bring your kids, bring your teenagers. Teenagers walked out of youth group the other night filled with the Holy Ghost, tears running down their face. That's God, y'all. Get your teenagers in church. Amen. Amen. I love it. I love it. I can feel the spirit all in the lobby. We done had church, trying to go home. And the Holy Ghost was still moving. Amen. That's a good thing to have. Hallelujah. So think about these things. Let me know what you think, okay? All right. At this time, guess what it is time for? We are going to open up our doors to new members. Would those joining the church today please come on down? Who could it be? Who could it be? Oh, my God. Big dog. Big dog. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I bet you feel like the world heavyweight champion right now. Hallelujah. He's a massive man, isn't he, Sister Peggy? Amen. All right. Praise God. I like, amen. I am so grateful for these two wonderful Christians 
They've, they've been here with us a while. They had to kind of check out the scene and make sure everybody was all right first. Amen. Because we are a little crazy around here. <laughs> but they have prayed, meditated, and they have tasted and seen that God is good here. And that we've not lost our minds. You can turn around, guys. All right. Here, we're going to read our church covenant real quick. I always like to review it for everyone here. It says this. It says, having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God in this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ and to humbly review and adhere to our church's constitution. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and personal devotions, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, to be faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger. Please don't get mad here. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That'd be a mess. I'm just kidding. To be zealous in our effort to advance the kingdom of our Savior, we further engage to watch over one another in brotherly and sisterly love, to remember one another in prayer, to aid one another in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and Christian courtesy and speech, to be slow, to take offense. As soon as you get mad at somebody, realize Satan is dangling some bait over your head. Amen. And all he wants to do is make you quit. He just wants to make you quit. Go sit back at home and don't get involved in nothing. Don't talk to nobody. Da, 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 da. The devil is a liar. Amen. Hallelujah. But always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Because we believe what we stand for here can work anywhere. It can work anywhere. Amen? All right. By your actions today and the weeks leading up to this day, you make it evident that you desire to commit to this ministry officially. First of all, are you saved and have the promise of eternity on your life because you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life? If so, say yes. Amen. Second, do you vow to support this ministry as much as absolutely possible with your attendance, your giving, and your servanthood? In other words, your time, your tithe, and your talent. If so, then say yes. All right. Can I get a motion on the floor by a church member? I see that motion. Can I get a second? I see that motion. Then by, God, by the authority given to me, first by Almighty God, and secondly by the church board and the active church members, I do declare that you are members of Christian Fellowship Independent Church on this day, Sunday, November 13th, 2022. Welcome to CFC. Turn right around. Here's your family. This is Sister Peggy Bunn, and are, you are Renee's aunt, is that really? All right, I don't know. I say aunt, my, my grandparents said ain't. Some people say aunt. Hallelujah. It is wonderful to have you here. I've seen your smiling face out in the seats there for a while. You've been very faithful. Thank you for your faithfulness. Is there anything you'd like to say to your church family? Hallelujah. Welcome home, sister. My man, my man, hallelujah, hallelujah. I saw this guy in the gym years ago, and I said, I've got to get close to him. I've got to, because I don't need to be against him. 
Hallelujah. I need to be on his side. Amen. And he wanted to know uh, where I was preaching at. He come out here and uh, he's been with us ever since. He specializes in security for us out here, and he is a wonderful, wonderful man of God. When you don't see him here, he's on an 18-wheeler hauling your groceries up and down the road so you can have something to eat. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he's, a, he's the real deal, and we love him. He's so humble, um, and he's just a great man, a great Christian, and he wants to always do the right thing. And we need men of God in this day and time that want to do the right thing. Amen. Amen. Is there anything you'd like to say, brother? Love you, buddy. We're going to ask them to stand uh, beside me when we get ready to dismiss today and give the right, if you're comfortable with that, and the right hand of fellowship uh, as you leave today so you can welcome them personally. Amen. Can we thank God one more time for Stacy and Peggy? Amen. You may be seated. Good day. What a good day. All right. At this time, the King's Kids and Junior King's Kids can be dismissed. Can we thank our volunteers for sacrificing their time? Here you go, Chuck. There you go. All right. How many is ready for a new series this morning? I like it. All right. About half the church. Y'all want to stay... Y'all want to stay in targeted prayers. Well, guess what? This is piggybacking off of targeted prayers. We were in targeted prayers for two months. Now we're about to say amen. Hallelujah. I think you're going to like this um, if you don't mind being real with yourself. But if you are fake with yourself and you love to have a lot of excuses, you're not going to like this series. Okay? Okay. But how many know I want to be better? I want to be the best me I can be for Jesus. I do. This is going to help us. This new series is called A Solid Amen. We almost called it a believable amen, but Braden said a solid amen sounded better. So I uh, submitted to his authority on that. No, I think a solid amen is good because not being solid is the single biggest thing that has hurt the church for decades now. Not being solid shows that we have weakness. It shows that we have a lack of faithfulness. And I believe that in the church age of today, and I believe that we are at the end of the church age, nothing has hurt the church worse Nothing has hurt ministry worse than hypocrisy. Not doing what we preach about. Not walking in what we say amen to. Right? A solid amen. The word amen means so be it. So be it. So when we say amen, we're saying so be what it is we're amening to. We're saying I agree with that. Let it be as you have said, woman of God. Let it be as you have said, man of God, right? So it's always said aloud, therefore making it a declared agreement. In our prior series on prayer, we hit on the power of agreement. So this whole series will center around that and how much solidarity we actually live out concerning what we've agreed to in prayer and in Scripture. We must back up and live out our amen. Can I say it again? We must back up and live out our amen. And for too long now, Christians' amen has been too shady and too shaky. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We don't need shady preachers. We don't need shady churches. Can I tell you, a man can fall down and make a mistake, especially in a season of depression and oppression. But it's when, come on, uh, any preacher can fall. Any preacher can sin. But when you start to defend your sin, when you start to tell people, you don't need to worry about what I do. Amen. Come on, somebody. 
We got preachers today that are eat up with too much politics. They're eat up with too many things. All they see is, did my team win or not? All they see is the color of a man's skin. And Dr. King said it's not the color of a man's skin. It is the, come on, the content of his character. Have we lost that? Hallelujah. We got to back up our amen. Hypocrisy happens, yes. Yes, it happens. You're going to have hypocrites in church. You're going to have hypocrites on the platform. Amen. But guess what? You got hypocrites at your job too. And I bet you'll get up the exact time you're supposed to get up tomorrow. And you'll show up on time. And you'll be nice. And you'll bite your tongue when you see things you don't like. And you might even let your voice be heard when you see things you don't like. But you will do what you got to do so that Friday you get that paycheck. And you will go to Walmart. And they are full of hypocrites up and down the aisles. So if you're not going to stay home from work and you're not going to stay home from Wally World, you don't need to stay home from the house of God. Amen? I want everybody that's right with God to come to church. I want everybody that's not right with God to come to church. I want people that don't suffer from any kind of hypocrisy in here. And I want the biggest hypocrites in Nash and Wilson County to roll right up in here and let the Holy Ghost change you. Preach coming on. It does happen, yes, hypocrisy. And it always hurts, it always hinders. And when we're honest and we're humble and we confess to one another and we get restored, I love that. That's a Jesus story every time. But it's those that don't want to get no better. It's those that have fallen back into what their flesh wants. Amen? You had addiction in your flesh, and you fell back to it again. But guess what? We are physical, and we are spiritual. And we adhere so much to the physical. We'll do what the flesh wants all day long. But will we adhere to the spiritual? Will we quit letting Hollywood examine the power of the spiritual just so they can make movies? And will the church start investing more in the spiritual and pull away from the physical, pull away from the flesh, pull away all these things that are bringing us down? Amen? We don't have no more time for hypocrisy. We got to get it out. We got to get it out. And it's not just those that have reverend pastor in front of their name that need to get it out. It's every Christian that wears the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Hallelujah. You know, I didn't growing up, I, I, I almost felt like God was a dictator that wanted to get me every day. God's going to get me today. God's going to get me today. And then I heard the message of grace, and I was delivered from that. I have a righteous fear of God. I respect God, but I don't think God's trying to kill me for every mistake I make either. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And so we got on that bandwagon, and it was a good bandwagon to get on, but then all of a sudden it got too loose. It got too loose, and all of a sudden our nation is broken. Our culture is broken. Our environment is contaminated. Why? Because that's the shape of our church. The church is contaminated. The church has made too many excuses. The divorce rate in the church is higher now than it is outside the church. Right? We give in to everything in the flesh and we don't repent. We don't confess. We don't say, I'm sorry, God. We don't want nobody telling us what to do with our life. You just mind your own business. And we, I don't want you to judge me and God is my judge. Yeah, God is your judge. And he will find you guilty. Amen. Do you want to change, brother? Do you want to change, sister? Do you want to change, pastor? Or does your political party not allow you to do it? I don't live in Wilson County. Did Ken Fontenot win this week? Hallelujah. 
a real man of God that believes in your Bible, that, watch out for him. Watch out for men like Ken Fontenot and Mark Robinson. Amen. Come on, somebody. They're being shouted down. They're being called sellouts. No, they're not. They're Christians. They are Christians standing up for the Word of God. Oh, hallelujah. I want to meet Mark Robinson. Anybody knows him? Tell him I'm going to call him. He's a good gospel singer, too. He can sing. Amen. All right, let's get into this. Hallelujah. Father, I ask you today. Help me with this series. God, you've got me on a pause mode with this series like no other series before. Instead of having so many things mapped out ahead of time, you've got me waiting like a baby bird to be fed one message at a time, unlike no other time in my life. And I believe that what you're saying to me is what you're saying to every person under the sound of my voice right now. And that is slow down and let me feed you the manna from above each day the way I did the nation of Israel when they were beginning to become a nation. And God is saying I want Christians to learn how to become a nation because you're supposed to be the kingdom of God on earth. I want you to learn how to worship together. I want you to learn how to live together. I want you to learn how to minister and serve together. So God, I'm asking you right now, as you have fed this to me, let it be fed to your people today. In the matchless name of Jesus, somebody say amen. Somebody give me a solid amen. Somebody give him praise because he alone is worthy of all our praise. All right, I've got a key scripture I'm going to probably be sharing in several of the messages. And it comes with a very simple focus point that we'll begin with today. Do not swear. Look at your neighbor and say, do not swear. Do not I want to turn to Matthew chapter 5. I haven't told you that. I've gotten so excited. We'll be in Matthew 5. Then we'll flip over to chapter 19. But we're staying in Matthew. Do not swear. Where we are in this particular portion of Scripture, Matthew 5, we'll begin reading in verse 33, is Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, where so much was shared, declared, and taught, and imparted. And in it he gave the Beatitudes where he identified how blessed the meek and poor in spirit were, along with so many others. Then he begins to delve into the subject of making oaths, which is where we'll pick it up. Verse 33, Jesus says this. He says, again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, meaning do not lie, especially under oath. You lie under oath, it's called perjury. It is a crime in our judicial system that you could face uh, confinement for. He says, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. He said, that is what they said in the Old Testament. And the Old Testament was all about different acts and ordinances. But Jesus shed his blood once and for all, that it wasn't about the acts we do on the outside. It was about the spirit and the power we allowed to live on the inside of us. Verse 34, but I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, don't swear to heaven, for it's God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, nor shall you swear by your own head because you can't make one hair white or black. I do a good job of making them absent and gray. But then he says this, let your yes be yes and your no be no. In other words, be known for keeping your word. Do people know you, know that you keep Your word, don't be shady. 
Ooh, come on, something. It makes me get frustrated when I encounter shady Christians. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. Why would he say that? When you have to swear outside of legal proceedings, you could be setting yourself up for unintended failure. So Jesus admonished, meaning he firmly and sternly warned against it. Why would he do that? He said, just let your yes be yes and your no be no. If you'll do that, you'll never have to reassure somebody you're telling the truth. When you say something, you say, I, and Lord, forgive me for saying this, but you say you swear on somebody's life. You swear on this, you swear on that. You swear to God and all these things. Do you realize what you're doing in that? You're having to reassure people that you're not lying. I promise you I'm not lying. When why do you do that? Why do we feel that void? Why do we feel that weakness in us that says, I've got to reassure them they can trust me, so I've got to swear to something higher than me or something that they know is more value, that is very valuable to me? Well, that's having to go behind your own actions in your own life and say, you know what? I'm going to admit to you I've been shady in the past. And now I have to swear by God or I have to swear by this because my track record shows you that I'm not the most faithful person in the world. My track record shows you that I might say I'm coming, but I won't. I might, my track record says, I'll tell you I'll show up. Can I get even more personal with you? I'll sign up for the nursery. I'll sign up for kids' church. I'll sign up to be an usher. I'll sign up to do this and that. But if I don't feel like doing it, good God Almighty, wait a minute. What happened? Why don't we want to do anything like that? Nobody wants to shape and mold the direction of a child no more. If you think of children's ministry as glorified babysitting, then that's all it's going to be. But when you'll take on the mantle of God to say, you know what? I'm going to go back there once a month. I'm going to sit with those kids, and we're going to sing songs about Jesus. And I'm going to share the word, amen, with them so that one day when they get older, they'll be able to say, Miss Joy taught me about Jesus. Come on. We didn't do a whole lot of singing at home about him, but I knew on Sunday morning we were going to come on. The people that taught me in Sunday school helped mold me. Now, kids, young people, Sunday school is what we used to have real early. And then you came back on Sunday night, too. Three services in one day with the same folks. And we looked at that, we looked at that, and people started to say, well, it's getting too legalistic and too repetitious. But guess what? Guess what? We had kids growing up knowing who Jesus was. We had kids growing up knowing whether or not they were a man or a woman. So if you are a, and look, I'll go ahead and tell you, a lot of times the ladies take most of the burden on that. Hallelujah. I bet there's some men of God that could teach some kids about the word back here. Come on, somebody. And if we all work together, then you don't have the same person back there three or four times in a row missing church. Amen. They want to teach your children, but they want to learn too. Maybe I should have saved that for the leaders and volunteers segment. <laughs> Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Amen. What did Stacy and Peggy do a while ago? They vowed, I'm joining this church. I took my time. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I like it when people take their time. Amen. Enough of this, I, I just visited one time. I want to join next week. I want to get baptized the week after that, and then you ain't seen me no more. That's foolishness. That's not letting your yes be yes, and that's not letting your no be no. That's instability. Amen? Am I talking right in this church? Or have I ticked half of you off? Good! Amen? 
Let your yes be yes. It was something inside of me when I got saved and got born again. I didn't become perfect, but I didn't want to be shady. If I told Jared Bazell I was going to be here, I was going to be here. Amen? I said, I'll even come in early and turn the heat on in the winter and turn the air on in the summer. I'll get here and we'll pray. And I got here and there was always a man, an older gentleman named Elijah Looper. He's going home to be with the Lord now. And he was always here early and he would pray with me. As a young minister called to preach, I needed that. As a young Christian, I needed that. Hallelujah. We've got to let our yes be yes. We've got to let our no be no. And guess what? No is a good word. I was in a sales meeting one time. And the girl, I don't know if y'all remember uh, WSAY, the say team. I worked for that country music station. And our sales manager was the great Gordon Finney. He used to do the solid gold lunchbox at 12 o'clock. And he walked in there. He said, guys, today, this is the answer you want. You want, when you're selling ads today, you either want yes or no. He said, don't let it be other. He said, because that's the three categories you're going to fall in. Yes, no, or other. Yes, you're signing them up. You're moving on to the next one. No, okay, I'll try back next month. But other, you're just, you're calling them back every, I don't know, check back with me tomorrow. No, you don't need an other. You need a yes or a no. And if we need that in the sales world, don't we need it in the Christian world? Don't we need it in the church world? Don't we need people to be solid? You could be setting yourself up for unintended failure, so Jesus admonished against it. Let me give you my one and only shouting point for this scripture. Say what you mean and mean what you say by never making promises you cannot keep. Just don't make them. Don't swear by this. Don't swear by that. Either give a solid yes or a solid no. And I like when people look, look, don't hold me to that. I can't promise you on that. I was dealing with a contractor the other day. He said, as of right now, I cannot give any contract price. I can't because I never know what materials are going to cost from week in to week out. That's how bad inflation has hurt. So many uh, companies and things. He said, so it's, it's just, it's up in the air right now. I can't really give you an answer. That is a hard thing when somebody can't give you an answer. Amen? Imagine standing at the altar getting married, and it's time for the other person to say yes. Amen? And they just stand there, and they can't give you an answer. I thought you love me. What's all this forever stuff we were talking about? <laughs> Darling, don't you want to say yes in front of all these people? Hallelujah. I seen a lady one time, she was about to say her vows in a wedding, and she did like this. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I had to catch her. Amen. <laughs> we want our yes to be yes and our no to be no. Why? Because that's what our Jesus told us. The way he told us to live. He said, quit putting your... Quit backing yourself into corners. You don't need to be backed into. Just be honest with people. Be on, don't put on a show with nobody. Be who you are. Amen? All right, that's Matthew chapter 5. And we'll, we'll kind of, that's going to be our chief scripture on a, on a lot of the messages we do. But now let's get into something, my first example of a solid amen. Let's flip over to chapter 19. Are you okay? Am I doing all right so far? Matthew 19, verse 13, my one and only and my last focus point for this is this. He didn't. When you think you want to go further. When you think you want to go further. And then you get there. And you find out that going further requires more from you than you're willing to pay. It requires more from you than you're willing to sacrifice. When you think you want to go further. Chapter 19, verse 13, Jesus blesses little children and counsels the rich young ruler. Look at this in verse 13. 
with me. It says, then little children were brought to him that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid hands on them and departed from there. I shared a, a video last night of a kid who had a heart trouble. Just a little boy. And he reminds me of Wendy's son, Caden. Because he's just, he's small and young, but he's got such a good sports brain. It reminds me of my kids. They were real little, and they were already spitting out all of these statistics. When I, and I couldn't keep up with nothing. I didn't know who won what. I got smarter with sports because I had smart kids. And um, there was a little boy. He wanted to meet. He lives in Baltimore. And um, he's, oh, sorry, he's a Ravens fan. He wanted to meet Lamar Jackson, quarterback for the Ravens. And when Lamar is brought in, have anybody seen that video I posted? You need to watch that thing. The kid goes in there, and he grabs a hold of Lamar, and he will not let him go. He is meeting his iconic hero on the field. And Lamar Jackson, they say, is a born-again Christian. And he does a lot of that. And he wanted to meet that kid. And I thought to myself, this kid don't have his mind on nothing but the fact that he gets to meet his hero. All the stuff, the culture, everything everybody would, would try to put in this kid's head about the NFL or this player or that player and all I mean look at how they have torn down Herschel Walker but just a, a very rich man and all he wants to do is serve his country all of that see a, a child abandons all of that children don't worry about the things you and I worry about but such is the kingdom what innocence no hidden agendas no motives because I would be like this, oh, 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 give me a Sharpie and about five footballs. <laughs> Lamar, I'd like for you to, to Tim Hall. This is Christmas, y'all. <clears throat> to Tremaine Coppage. You know what? I would have a hidden agenda. That kid didn't bring Lamar nothing to sign. He just wanted to hug him. And it touched my heart. Amen. That in this, this culture we live in with so much hate, so much derogatory statements made, all these things, it's just a kid loving his hero. And Jesus said they're innocent. Don't forbid them. The disciples didn't want no kids around. Why? He wanted to deal with other, they wanted to deal with other people. They wanted to deal with adults. But you're not going to get a more solid amen than you will get from these kids over here. Their amen is solid. Right? It is solid. They don't worry about a roof over their head. They know they're going to be provided for. They have an innocence about them. So their solidarity is always sincere. He said, don't rebuke them. Don't forbid them. For such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and they departed from there. You see, you cannot get more honest and open than a child. Their young innocence is their qualifying attribute in God's eyes. So their amen would be solid. And the disciples overlooked them. But then another young man comes up, much older than the children. And he's an important politician. He's an important dignitary. He's some type of hierarchy ruler. And when he comes around, now he's allowed to talk to Jesus. Right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love it when the children come to me in this church. Hallelujah. I am never too busy to hug your child because they're honest, they're open. And for such as these, they are the kingdom that Jesus is bringing. Verse 16, now behold, one came and said to him, good teacher. This is the rich, young dignitary. And he says, good teacher, because he could not see Jesus fully. How many know that, yeah, Jesus taught, and we're all teaching off of him now, but how many know he's more than just a teacher? How many know he's more than just a prophet? Now behold, one came and said to him, good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? I mean, I'm just a teacher, right? That's all you've seen. 
but you're calling me good. He says, no one is good but one, and that is God. He honors the Father since he had not been acknowledged. Jesus always acknowledged the Father. Jesus walked in honor. Had someone tell me last week, they said, thank you for how you honor Jerry Brazil. Because even though you're celebrating 15 years of ministry, he's celebrating 15 years of retirement. And most pastors, if they're gone from a church for 15 years, that church, that congregation has forgotten about them. But we honor him here. And they said, what you're doing is you're teaching the next generation to honor you one day, Daniel. Amen? And honor is a kingdom key. We will continue to be a blessed congregation here as long as we continue to honor our heritage and honor our heavenly Father. Amen? He says, no one is good but one that is God. But if you want to enter into life eternally, keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? Now, a lot of people will say, well, all of them. But he says, which ones? And then Jesus gets specific, right? You shall not murder. And some people say, well, that's a no-brainer. Tell that to Montana. Beautiful country. They make Yellowstone there. They ain't right with God, y'all. If the baby is born, put it in another room, put it off in a corner so he'll quit breathing eventually. Joy was telling me a while ago that happened, and they went, and the nurse said, "Uh uh-uh, I ain't doing this. Grabbed the baby, called the cops. Because that doctor was trying to kill that baby. That is murder in 2020. I lied, baby. Come on, somebody. Thou shalt not murder. You shall not commit adultery. Right? This isn't a time. This was a long time ago. But don't commit adultery. Whoever you're married to, that's who you need to be with. And the culture was different in the Old Testament with all of these uh, trying to grow population and all of that. I get that. We wonder about that. But Jesus now, who was there, he was the fourth man in the fire. He was around in the Old Testament too. He was around when Jacob had his multiple wives. He was around when Solomon had all them wives. And he's still saying, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal if it's not yours and you can't pay for it. Don't take it. You shall not bear false witness. Don't lie. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. We say amen to that. But we'll put them to the side in a minute until you can no longer put them to the side because they're gone. Honor them. Honor them with the time you have left with them. Honor your father and your mother. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Treat people good. Right? Now Jesus didn't even go through all the commandments. He just went through a few of them, right? And the young man said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth. That's mighty bold right there. Jesus just went over like the top five commandments. And this young guy says, oh yeah, I've done that. Done. And Jesus doesn't argue with him. Jesus doesn't say, no you haven't. Now he called the woman at the well. He called her out for her mess. Yes, you have been married five times, and the one you're shacking up with now, you ain't married to him either. But you keep coming back to this well for water. I'll offer you living water today that'll cause you to never run dry. You'll never run out. You have been trying to find your validation in this man and that man and this man and that man, and it ain't working. How about this man right here? My name's Jesus. I'll never cheat on you. I'll never beat you. All right, let me, let me stay on track here. I need to talk about this rich young ruler. Jesus says, the, the young man says all these things. If he had done these things, then why not walk away happy 
and bless right then and there. Oh, really? That's what it takes? I got that down pat. Thank you, Jesus. But he didn't. He wondered, really? Is that it? Where was that void coming from? Why did he feel like he needed to ask another question? Here's what he asked right after that. What do I still lack? He just told you what you needed to do to live forever in heaven. And he answered and said, I've got it. I've done that. That is, that is good. I've, I'm good. But he still admitted himself that he lacked something. He lacked something. What made him ask this? You see, we all feel we've not done enough in our lives under God. But a real void eats at you when you truly know you could have done more because of the deep call on your life. What do you mean? The reason he was asking this is because there was an anointing on his life. There was a call on his life. Could this have been the one that Jesus was going to replace Judas with? Because he was asking him, watch what he asked him. He was getting ready to say, okay, you're talking about just being a good Christian. When you die, go to heaven. This is what you do. But he had something burning inside of him that I believe is burning inside of some of you this morning. And you're asking yourself, you, you, you've hit the commandments. You treat people good. You ain't kill nobody. You're not a, 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 a chronic liar. You, you know, when you mess up, you ask God to forgive you. But you still got a void inside of you. Can I tell you, that's a calling on your life that you have not submitted to. Amen? Earlier in the year, the devil tried to make me think I needed to give this up. That I needed to give this up, that I'd be at more peace, that I'd be happier, and that I wouldn't have so much weight on my shoulders and people looking at me, and I could just go do this and do that and be a happy-go-lucky Christian and sit out there. But there was something deep inside of me that when I began to think that way, it felt like a dreadful thing. And I said, no, I'll be miserable if I don't hold this microphone. I'll be miserable if I don't preach this gospel. We have seasons where we fail and we have seasons where we sin and we have seasons when we falter and make mistakes but my God, don't make excuses for them and please don't try to live in them. Come out of them and be who God has called you to be. Am I talking right, Pastor? What do I still lack? Jesus said to him in verse 21, you want to be perfect now, meaning if you want to go to a higher level, you want to make an impact, you want to change lives, you want to increase the kingdom, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven, and come follow me, be a part of my core, amen, don't be, a, don't just be, you're already a part of the crowd. The crowd is gathered. How about I make you a part of this team? That's going to require a little bit more. And a lot of times, come on somebody, believers aren't willing to give more. Because it may take you away from other things. It may take you away from other circles of life. It may take you away from other circumstances and other environments and cultures. But if God has called you to it, you must obey. Come on, somebody. He said you're already a part of this crowd. I'm going to make you a part of my core. I'm going to make you a part of my core. He's offering him a starting position on the greatest team of evangelists that ever hit the world. The Bible says that they were men who turned the world upside down. And he's offering this young rich kid who ruled over something. We don't know. We don't even know his name. We just know he was rich. And Jesus offered him a job at no pay. But when the young man, verse 22, heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. All of Jesus' disciples had given up their careers to be a 
part of his core, right? But this addition would have been huge because we know that one of them was a doctor, one of them was a tax collector, several of them were career fishermen, but none of them had been a high-ranking young dignitary or a high-ranking young powerful ruler or a high-ranking young politician, none of them. He had a lot of money, and he didn't want to abandon all those things because he looked at the life that Jesus and the disciples were living. And even though they were, when they came to town, it was like the Beatles came to America. And how many know Jesus is bigger than the Beatles? Hallelujah. John Lennon, I hope you ask for forgiveness for that. Amen. Come on, somebody. He came to town with this group of young men. And this rich kid looks at him and says, yeah, y'all drawing crowds. Y'all look like y'all been living under a bridge somewhere. I can't live like this. I have a castle. I have a palace. I have servants. I eat the finest food. All of this. I can't live like y'all are living. Can't do it. But he knew he still lacked something. And it says, then Jesus said to his, excuse me, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. Then Jesus said in verse 23 to his disciples, assuredly I say to you, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Why? It's hard for them to surrender everything because they have so much. Right? How many know that Jesus, the Lord doesn't call everybody to give up everything. But some people are called to do that. Amen. I have not been called to what Chance Walters has been called to. It impresses me. It is a story of faith like no other. But it's also a story of obedience. Amen. When you're not drawing a paycheck every week, but you're bringing kids into the world by the half dozen. <laughs> Amen. Come on, somebody. When you'll go and you'll sell your home and say, Family, we're going to live in this Winnebago now. Can you see me telling your first lady that? <laughs> it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say to you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. To eliminate all greed and pride and finally surrender to God is very, very hard for people of great wealth. You know why? Because they have been, they've made their own way, many of them, and they're able to say, you know what, I, I, I caused this to happen. But here's the thing. Even rich folks have got to realize the blessings of God on their life. Amen? Did God let you get to a certain point and it comes a time when you stand out on your balcony like Nebuchadnezzar and you have had all these great young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, all of them telling you about their God but you still want to stand on your hierarchy and you want to stand on your balcony and say, I did all this? No, 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 no. God took him right down to the ground and he was on all fours eating grass like an animal. Right? And there are some people in our country right now that are sick with power. Sick with power. It's all about power. Amen? And God is the judge. I believe we're going to start seeing some kings in this country begin to fall because they have refused to repent for what they have done to this nation. And all the people they've indoctrinated and brainwashed that put them there. I used to think that when he said it was easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, we're talking about a little needle with a little eye bolt on it, shaped like an eye bolt. Yeah. How's a camel going to get through this little thing? But in ancient times, there was an entrance into the buildings and the walls of the city that a man could walk through, but if he had to take a horse or a camel, he would have to take the reins, pull them down, and get the camel who's very tall and got humps on their back to get down like this. And the camel would actually walk through the little passageway. 
He said, that's difficult. But it's easier to accomplish that than it is to get a rich man to give up everything and follow me. Because that's what he wanted him to do. Follow me. You may say to yourself out there today or out there online, you say, you know what, I keep the commandments too. What else do I need to do? You need to follow Jesus. Amen. And when you follow Jesus, Jesus ain't going to lead you to a life of sin. Jesus is not going to lead you to debauchery. When you're really following Jesus, he's not going to cause you and lead you to live a life that is contradictory to his word. Come on. Jesus is not going to lead you to hell. Jesus is going to lead you to heaven. Can I get a witness? If you have done everything else you can think of, why don't you try following Jesus? Praise God. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, well, who in the world can be saved then? Why would he say that? Because it sounds like we can't accomplish it. It sounds like it's a goal I can't reach. Guess what? You can't. Because the moment you start thinking, you know what, I can be good enough. It's all about you. I can keep the commandments. I can live it according with, to the Bible, and I can be perfect. But guess what? If it's all you doing it, guess what you're going to do? You're going to become judgmental of everybody you see that's not doing it. And then you're going to tear them down, and you're going to think you're so high and mighty, then all hell's going to hit your life, and you're going to find yourself falling back in that same ditch of sin you thought you were too holy to ever go back to. Guess what? You fell back into it because all you wanted to do was keep rules and be the best Christian anybody could see, and at the whole time you were never following Jesus because Jesus don't beat people down. Jesus don't look at people and make people feel embarrassed to come to church. Jesus don't want to humiliate nobody. Jesus, come on, he died for the sinner. Amen? I call out the debauchery of our day, but at the same time, come on, that person is suffering from transgenderism right now. Jesus still died on a cross for them. Amen? Hallelujah. Just because I don't want to vote to put them in office don't mean I hate them. Hallelujah. Who can be saved? Because it sounds like we can't accomplish it. Jesus looked at him and said, with men, this is impossible. All right? With Washington, D.C., it's impossible. With Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, Green Party, Independents, it is impossible. But with God. But with God. Can we get God back in our courthouses? Can we get God back in the White House? Can we get God back in the pulpit? But with God, say it with me, all things are possible. How many believe that? Would you stand and give him some praise right now? If you know that you can do anything when you got God on your side, oh, just lift your hand up. Give him a wave offering in this place. We don't want to leave you out, God. We don't want to do it without you, God. Because you and him and anyone else can't be good enough, nor do enough to accomplish this completely. But if you'll follow me, Jesus says, I'll make a way because that is why my Father sent me. That's why my Father sent me. You can remain standing. I'm about to close it out. That's why my Father sent me. He didn't send me to make everybody rich. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, but He can use your richness. He didn't come to make everybody so high and mighty that they can't be reached by others. He didn't come that we could all drive the finest cars. He came to give life. And if you'll realize that there's nothing on this earth that can compare to what you have stored up for you in heaven. You see, the rich young ruler was so excited about his question then he asked another, and then he was disappointed. I'm going to give you my last shout point. Watch this. If 
you can't live without asking the question, make sure you can live with the answer. Make sure you can live with the answer. What's it going to take, God? Watch out when he answers you. What about when he answers you? Will you do it? Will you do it? Some of the greatest disappointments I've ever had in ministry is when the Holy Ghost filled me with a righteous indignation about someone and a boldness to go and speak to them. And I would go and tell them what thus saith the Lord said. And they ignored it. Then fine. Do not sit under me anymore. Because if you don't think I can hear from God, what in the world is it ever going to do for you? I'm not here to give you a motivational speech. I am here to tell you what thus saith the Lord. And he says it through his word, and sometimes he says it to my heart. And if I see it's destroying your marriage, I'm going to tell you. If I see that it's destroying your home, I'm going to tell you. And then you got a decision to make. Whether or not you're going to be so full of pride that a preacher can't tell you nothing, or are you going to submit to the will of God and turn it around? If you can't live without asking the question, make sure you can live with the answer. That young man knew there was more. He wanted to experience it. God was calling him to be a disciple that could have helped write the New Testament. We could be saying his name today. Let's say his name was Arthur. Turn to the gospel of Arthur. We're not saying that. You know why? Because he didn't obey God. He said no to Jesus. Too many people are saying no to Jesus. You mean in the world? No, in the church. Look at what the church is standing for. Look at what we're voting for. Look at what we're agreeing with. Is that really our amen? Is that our amen in 2022? I'll tell you right now. And if I lose you, I love you. But I got to stand for what I believe. I, that's not my amen. The junk I've seen this week, it is not my amen. My amen uh, 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 adheres to the word of God. My amen comes from the Bible. Killing babies after they're born. Allowing people that don't even know their identity to lead districts. Preachers that had rather stand up for their political party than the gospel that they've been commissioned and entrusted to preach. I am sick of seeing these pastors sell out. They need to get saved. And if you know anybody that keeps sitting under them Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, come on. We need to pray for them. But I pray right now that every single one of them will get in the pulpit and apologize. Apologize to their community. Apologize to their state. Apologize to their country. And apologize to their God. As I begin to close, we must put some solidness, some solidarity back in our amen as believers. I want the people I love and the God I serve to trust my amen. Hallelujah. I'm not perfect. But I tell you one thing I am. I'm older than I used to be. I'm a little wiser than I used to be. Hallelujah. The enemy had a field day with me this year. I never, th- I never thought I'd ever consider quitting ministry. But when I watched my father fade, 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 fade. I almost lost my faith. But you know how I felt better about the whole thing? I had a hospice nurse. See, your father died with grace. She said, men in his condition cuss us out. They treat us like garbage. They got a problem with everything. But your father was so kind and loving to us. He blessed us and He ministered to us from His deathbed. And right then I saw what God was doing. He used my Father to bless these hospice nurses. 
hospice nurses who would probably told a man that age and that color won't ever like you. I said it. We're too indoctrinated. We think too much about color. And they didn't see nothing but love. And I believe, come on, God was doing a work there. Amen. You know why? Because they had seen so much hateful racism out of other people from his generation. And God used my day to break it right now. Break it. Break it. Break it right now. Pastor Jerry said before he seen them singing in their deathbed, praising God, and then the ones that refused to repent said, oh, they were crying out in pain, said, my feet are already burning. It's time to get right with God. And the way we get right with God is we let our amen be more solid. Come on, I'm tired of that flaky, shaky, shady junk. If you're ready to tell Jesus today, I'm in it. I'm in it. I ain't backing up no more. I'm not making no more excuses. I am in this thing. Then I want you to rush this altar right now. And we are going to pray as a family this morning. Hallelujah. Come on. How many soldiers we got in this place? How many people that say, I want God to use me in these last of the last days? Let's sing that chorus together. So when I fight, I'll fight on my... Hey everybody, Pastor Daniel Parker here with Assistant Pastor Tim Hall thanking you for tuning in this week and watching this live stream broadcast, or if you're watching it recorded later on, we thank you. We want you to share it with everybody that you can. Hit like. Tell us something in the comments if we're reaching you. And if you're in driving distance, we would love to have you right here at Christian Fellowship Church on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Come early for coffee and fellowship, and then we're going to have some of the best praise and worship music you'll hear anywhere and series preaching straight from the Word of God. And then on Wednesday nights, we have our weekly Bible study at 7 p.m., and we got all kinds of things going on Sunday evenings, life groups, men's and ladies fellowship, as well as our all-new Kingdom Couples marriage ministry we love you we want you to to sow into the church be a part of the church come on we love you if you got saved today you accepted jesus christ into your heart then we want you to message us right here on our page and we will call and pray for you again thank you for tuning in today pastor tim what say you to the wonderful people out there that's tuned in today we pray if this message has reached you because we're all about kingdom vision amen come see us well, you, we got to seek just for you. We love you. We thank you. And just continue to keep your faith in God's unchanging hand. And we enjoyed you. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless.